I'm Dave Muller. I'm an artist, a uh, musician, I don't know, doing all sorts of things. My first memory of meeting Mike was that I was friends with a lot of people at Art Center who were going to school about the same time I was going to school. And I went to an opening for one of the student, graduate students at Art Center's, you know, like show. And he was at one of those and I sort of met him in that, in that context. As you meet people, there's different ways you meet people. You know, usually everybody has these guards up and everybody's very polite and everybody does this and this. And eventually, if you get to know people, some of those layers work themselves away. But in this case, it was right out in front. I started working for Mike in 1995 as his mostly principal assistant. I started right about the same time, actually about a month earlier, playing music with Mike in a couple different bands. One of them was Destroy All Monsters, which he was starting up again after he had put out a compilation of sort of the things they did in the 70s. I came in towards the tail end of Educational Complex, but it was interesting to me just because it had so many things that he later dealt with. It seemed to be very pivotal maybe for the work he was doing that was the post crocheted animals and so on and so forth. And my interpretation of it was that he was tired of everybody saying that, that, you know, like that all that other work had to do with trauma. So he was going to give them some levels of, you know, like some levels of what the trauma he might have either made up or came through. And that these, that the buildings themselves, you know, like basically covering, say, all of, all of the institutions he'd ever been through um, was a way of thinking about the architectural spaces he had been in and that seemed to be very fruitful for him towards making work in the future. Working with Mike was a real kind of a joy. He usually came to you with what he wanted to do, but he was always open to thinking about changing things as you were going if, if things seemed to be better if that would happen, which I appreciated. I mean, if I was going to have a job working for somebody else, might as well be like that. That was one of the best, basically it's the best job I ever had working for somebody else. Being in a band with Mike and Jim Shaw and Kerry Lauren and Art Byington was, uh, was really fun. I mean, all the places we did play were, I thought, rather nice venues and situations, most of them either art-influenced or, or art-related, and they were pleasures to be in, in terms of you're around all these interesting bands and nothing else. As a fan, I like being at these things. You know, the core would have been, say, Mike, Art Byington, Jim Shaw and Kerry would practice for about a week at Mike's house in the, in the studio behind the house in the other house in that compound and who are probably Kerry would be like sleeping in the you know in the bedroom that's behind all that so it was kind of like everybody was just live in work you know for a week and kind of you'd practice every day and kind of like get things together figure out what the heck we're going to do and then go somewhere and do it if there was anything that we were recognized more for at that point or Mike Kelly was recognized more for it was interesting to me to see this because pop culture sees him as the guy who did the Sonic Youth cover for, for Dirty. So everywhere you showed up, if there was a magazine that had anything about the fact that we were around, we were getting interviewed and blah, blah, blah. It was all about, you know, the thing that was the introductory image was the fact that Mike had done this cover for a more famous band. So that was what on, was on popular culture's radar as opposed to, say, whatever art he had done. I thought that was really interesting and, and I kind of, on some levels, really liked that because, I mean, if, if there is some sense of celebrity in the art world, it's so superseded by whatever celebrity is considered in the real, you know, like in the, in the, in the upper, you know, in pop culture. I mean, Mike was quite happy to be, I think, running his own record label and putting it out himself. So, what, you know, did you want some bigger label or some bigger institution to take care of you? No. I also think that it was something on his side that he is interested in doing, but he made a large point at the time of discounting it as something sort of separate and, and whether I agree with that or not is a different thing, but I mean separate and sort of subservient to his larger art practice. My whole idea of what conceptual art is, is like whatever it takes to get the job done. Like you learn how to do this, you learn how to do this, you get this, you figure out whatever it takes. And I always liked it for Mike that sort of happened, like it was just coming from everywhere to do whatever he wanted to do.